Malo Lele, welcome to Pacifica TV and radio from here in Brisbane, Australia. Now, prior to the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, he was relatively unknown. But after he made his grand entrance into the opening ceremony, wearing his lolotonga and of course brandishing the Tongan flag, it catapulted him into international stardom. I'm of course talking about Peter Townford de Ford Jr., who's based here in Brisbane, Australia, and our program caught up with him recently to find out where he's at and what's happening. His unforgettable entrance to the opening ceremony broke Twitter and put the Kingdom of Tonga on the world stage. Peter Taunfutafua Jr. has represented Tonga in Taekwondo. As if that wasn't enough, he then pushed himself a little bit further to become a cross-country skier before adorning his Taobala and Lolotonga at the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang in South Korea. Peter Taunfutafua Jr. spoke exclusively to Pacifica TV and Radio. So, Malolele, my name is Peter Taunfutafua, Peter Jr as my father would say, uh, and I'm a two-time Olympian, about to be a three-time Olympian. So I, I'm in for Taekwondo, um, and they've just confirmed that uh, once, if you're qualified, you, you maintain that qualification. So I think there's around 50% of athletes uh, in total who have, who have qualified. So we maintain that uh, qualification. Kayaking, there's one last chance. I mean, kayaking was always, it, it was a long shot for me because you either have to be number one in Oceania and I'm completely new to the sport. Um, or this, this last shot is you've got to be the fastest unqualified country at the World Championships, which puts you basically against, you know, all the best in the world to qualify your country. So there's one spot left. Um, that's, we'll be aiming for that and I'm, and I'm looking forward to having the extra time to try and, you know, to try and get across to that. But despite the setbacks, our proud Tongan Olympian has qualified in Taekwondo and has his sights set on the postponed Tokyo Olympics in July 2021. So I, I'm in for Taekwondo um, and they've just confirmed that uh, once, if you're qualified, you, you maintain that qualification. So I think there's around 50% of athletes uh, in total who have, who have qualified. So we maintain that uh, qualification. Kayaking, there's one last chance. I mean, kayaking was always, it, it was a long shot for me because you either have to be number one in Oceania and I'm completely new to the sport. Um, or this, this last shot is you've got to be the fastest unqualified country at the World Championships, which puts you basically against, you know, all the best in the world to qualify your country. So there's one spot left. Um, that's, We'll be aiming for that and I'm, and I'm looking forward to having the extra time to try and, you know, to try and get across to that. Apart from his sporting prowess, engineering background and home-based Tongan training camp, he still finds the time to be UNICEF's one-time Pacific ambassador. I'm the, the first uh, Goodwill ambassador to the Pacific uh, for UNICEF. And my role there is to, is to encourage, uh, I guess, programs and, and things around the Pacific. Uh, one, of our first, one of our first programs was actually Hand Washing Day. Oh, wow. So I did that over in Fiji and that was a year ago before this was a... Very topical. Yeah, it's very, I mean, it's like... <laughs> very relevant now. Very relevant now. And, and I guess the irony is, is that, you know, we're teaching kids to wash their hands. Um, there's probably a lower incidence of, of young people getting this current uh, coronavirus. But um, one thing that people didn't realize is that our greatest, uh, I guess, weapon against this virus is washing hands, but there's kids all around the world who don't have water or access to clean water. So we're telling them, stop the virus by doing this, but with what? So let, you know, we're just trying to put a lot of that stuff into perspective. Um, UNICEF provides a lot of different things. After, you know, after a cyclone, we, um, house, the, we ha house the young people in uh, one, of the, one of the schools still has UNICEF uh, tents, you know, um, over in, uh, uh, over in town, I forgot the name, but it was, it's, you know, to give that emergency relief as well and, and, and do programs. The, the cooking show was about healthy eating. Um, so yeah, it's all, all of those, those main topics that we all know about, but we just got to keep them in the forefront of, of people's minds. And we, we do that through media and what we're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> and behind every good man is an even greater coach. Our sport is looking fantastic. I mean, we there's so many passionate people in Tonga. It's not just uh, it's not just the athletes. And this is something that I really want to drive home to our Tongan people: is that we've also got some of the best coaches, managers uh, in the world. I mean, my my coach, Master Paula Stapa, um, you know, 
We, he's responsible for the highest medal count for any sport in Tonga. That was eight medals at the South Pacific Games. And that, that, uh, that went to Taekwondo. Um, but, you know, this is a person who doesn't get so much of the limelight. Just, I'm here and I'm, I'm in front of the camera, but this is the guy who's responsible for getting all those medals for everyone else. And so uh, it's something that I would like to improve upon in Tonga is to get more recognition for our coaches, for our admin staff, for our managers, for the people who just have so much passion to, um, you know, to, drive, uh, to drive the athletes. Finally, a look into the future to reflect on what his legacy will be. You know, I want to, I want to have created opportunities for, uh, for the youth and for the people of Tonga to go to that next level. You know, I, wanted, I want to create um, gyms and programs and, and in a way I really want to change certain parts of our culture which I believe are detrimental and negative you know, to the next generation. So certain things like the way we eat, the way, we, the way an auntie will say, Ke fu'ututue! Just because, uh, just because a, a young girl is slim, you know, she's too skinny, go and eat some, like in a negative sort of way. And that mindset then leads to diabetes, to high blood pressure, to obesity, all these sorts of things. Like, th these are certain things which need to be removed, even, um, even certain things, and, and I'll probably get attacked for this, but the way that we kaipola. You know, traditionally our kaipola was fish and, and um, limu and, and, and nice tongue and meakai. Now it's like, Everything's wrapped in plastic. There's pongo, there's kapa pool, like all this sort of stuff. And and I feel like I'm the bad guy, being you know, the taking away all the all of the goodness. But then I see I see my aunties and uncles dying young, and I'm like, someone's got to say something. So my legacy-wise, I want to change certain things in our culture that make us a happy, healthy people, and so that everyone in the world one day looks back looks at tonga they say where are you from we go we're from tonga and they say ah you guys have the best sportsmen you guys have the best musicians the smartest academics the best five cows you know i want tonga to be the center of the not the center of the world but to be a place where people go wow amazing people come out of tonga and um it's going to take a lot of work but uh, I, be I, I absolutely believe that the best people in the world can can come from our little rock in the middle of the Pacific. But we asked Peter what motivates this 36-year-old Brisbane-based athlete to be his very best that he can be. So Australia had asked me, uh, you know, to represent them in different in Taekwondo and, and different things. But Australia is well represented, for one. Australia will go to this next Olympics and they'll come back with a stash of medals. They'll come back with sponsorships, and you know, to to choose Tonga also meant me choosing not to be paid so well or not to be paid at all like that was you know that's a sacrifice but the benefits far outweigh that and the benefits is are that the kids of Tonga are like maybe maybe I can be that one day maybe I can do that or maybe I can do my version of that or when you hear people from around the world they just send you random messages and they say um, you know I got one the other day I was in hospital and the nurse asked me where I where I was from and I said I'm from Tonga and the nurse said, oh, oh that sports, uh, that country with the sports guy with the flag, the red flag. So they know the red flag, you know, with the, with the small cross on it. So we get our cross out to the world as well. Um, that's, you know, that's part of that legacy that I want to put forward. And that's what motivates me is to, is to know that there's Tongans all around the world who, who are proud to be Tongan because of some of the work that I do, you know, my, I pull out my I pull out my wallet and it's got all these holes in it, but I pull out my heart and it's full and it's full with all of the the love from our the offer from our, our Tongan people. Peter Taufutafua Jr. was born in Brisbane, raised in the Kingdom of Tonga, and resides and trains here in Australia. Whether he's marching into a stadium or paddling a kayak, Peter will forever carry the Tongan flag in his heart, his determination, and his legacy. I guess, you know, currently the, the topic is, is coronavirus, but I think just in general, you know, to all of our Tongan, our Tongans around the world, to all of our Tongan kids, um, there is nothing, if, you, if you've been given a talent or you've been given a dream, with that dream, you've also been given the ability to achieve that dream. God doesn't just give us dreams without giving us the ability. So believe in yourself, believe that you are capable of, of achieving these great things, and God will, will open the way and He'll show you uh, he'll show you how to get there. Much love, off I.
Pika Wata from Malo Makeke, Peter Town for the Four Junior, and the Faratama Koya and the Taini, Kefara Hoko Hafe, Portal Noa Aki, the Mangahe, Yongo Koya, Aletio, Pima Television, the Pacifica, Me Brisbane. Big thank you there to Peter for his time to chat with us here at Pacifica TV and Radio here in Brisbane. And on behalf of our Brisbane Tongan community and many Tongans around the globe, we wish Peter all the best and the rest of our Tongan team as they lead us to victory at the Olympics in Tokyo in 2021.